Hello out there to our friends watching us on Facebook Live. Please make sure you leave your questions in the comments on our Facebook page, and we'll make sure we get to them at the end of our show today. And in the meantime, welcome to Sunday Supper. We are back. I'm Mike Jordan. I'm here again with Ashley and Kate. Hello. Hey. I looked at the different ones, but I am here with <laughs> Ashley and Kate on either side of Ashley. me. <laughs> and we today, you are joining us for our Biscuit Commandments episode, which is running during Biscuit Week here at Southern Kitchen. Today we're going to talk about how to make perfect biscuits from scratch, and we have our man Chef Jeffrey Gardner back to help us out with a little biscuit law. You know, Excited about it. How you yeah, doing? Yeah, we're always good. Uh, and he's excited and we're excited, but before we get started, a quick word from our sponsor, Kohler Signature Stores by... By PDI make well you're gonna make a mess when you make biscuits I think I mean it's kind of given that's part of it it's part of the process yeah. it's in the recipe but you can make clean up a breeze with Kohler's gentleman's bar sink faucet in the artifacts collection which features a vintage artisan inspired top mount handle a temperature memory system ceramic disc valves that exceed longevity standards and much more so make sure that you get out there and you get your uh, biscuit mess cleaned up the proper Kohler way I would say yeah <laughs> <laughs> Anything that helps uh, biscuit mess clean yeah. up on four. That's the worst part. Biscuits, are, but I mean, there's so much good about biscuits that the mess is okay. And so we're here to talk about it. I mean, um, Jeffrey's here, but we also have our awesome Kate, who knows a little bit of biscuit history and science, mm -hmm. or so we've been told. Yes. So I was doing um, some research. Ashley was doing some biscuit research, too, this week. And yes. we mm -hmm. learned that biscuit history is really controversial, and there's it's really hard to find consistently accurate stories about them but yeah there's they're like actually very conflicting it's like oh this comes from this mm, but actually it's something completely different so it's kind of like a get as much resources as you can and mm -hmm. make your best best guess yes <laughs> so one thing that that we learned that that was pretty interesting and funny to say at least is that um biscuits the word biscuit is derived from a, a latin word biscuit Biscotis? Biscotis. Uh, my middle name. <laughs> That's right. Okay, yeah. Which is the same root for the Italian biscotti. Ah. Um, Which we love. I yes. love. We love. Yeah. And it means twice baked. So, you know, that kind of gives you a hint that original biscuits were probably hard and crumbly and not laying fluffy and delicious. Like, yeah. you know, And it, it was like a luxury, too. Weren't biscuits kind mm -hmm. of like, a, well, it, it's like anything where we didn't have access. A lot of people didn't have access to flour and some of the ingredients. Right. That yeah, were life was more right? crumbly and dry back then, I think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. General. One, one really early American biscuit style is the, the beaten biscuit, okay. which is kind of like a giant hard cracker, and you can put it in your pocket and carry it along on a long trip, and it's not going to go bad. Like Napoleon Dynamite with tots, but mm -hmm. like... Yeah, <laughs> or even like the real Napoleon, maybe. I mean, I don't know if he had biscuits, but that was one part I saw when I was looking up some biscuit history was... It was very portable, so right. in uh, times of war, people would kind of, you know, ship the soldiers around the world to conquer, I guess, mm -hmm. but they would take livestock or, like, you know, living animals in a butcher, and that wasn't really ideal, and the biscuit became kind of like a way to keep your soldiers alive while you were getting ready to go That's and like make some other soldiers not alive, I guess, <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they'll coat yeah. your insides and keep you full for a yeah, while, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's... What about, like, Jeffrey, you brought up a good point earlier with the British biscuit, which is more like our cookie. So even further complicating mm -hmm. the history of biscuits is, like, the British threw a curveball or we threw the curveball at them. I think we probably threw the curveball. Sure we We're like, this biscuit is boring. Let's put some more fat and sugar into it and make it into something more delicious. The American way. America. Uh -huh. yeah, that's right. <laughs> I had to guess on the British one. I think that was probably derived from a French biscuit, uh, yep. which is its own little pastry element. Uh, definitely more sugar and crispier. Right. Similar to Bisquick. Or <laughs> bis yeah, I was going to say, how do you spell Yeah, that sounds, that's a cool name, but, too. In case yeah, they're all, they all come from the same thing, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Twice baked. Twice baked flour Thing. I'm going to start calling my potatoes uh, biscotis potatoes. <laughs> when I do twice but baked potatoes. <laughs> that was because they were they were they were actually baking them twice though, right? It was right. a process where you were putting them they were going into some kind of heat source mm -hmm. like once and then again. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're making them kind of the method that you would make a biscotti, you kind of bake it as a as Kate was saying almost like a large cracker, a large block of dough and then you would cut it. 
yep. and bake it again uh, to oh. kind of get that surface area crisp. Right. It's a food preservation method, too, if you think about it like making beef jerky or something. You're drying out all the moisture, and that's what makes things mold and go stale. So yeah. if it's if there's no moisture in it, it'll last forever. Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> mm. so it's like you, a biscuit crouton. That's so interesting, though, because... When you think about uh, biscuits, I, I'm always one of those people who makes more biscuits than I should. And the question heard I about always have: Saturday morning, I make a lot of biscuits. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> again, but how long do these biscuits last? Is kind of like a question. So, but it seems like they last as long as you're tolerant of, you know, whatever you know you're putting in your biscuits. But that's always the thing is that, okay, this is food preservation. And I remember someone said the same thing about fried chicken, which also goes very well with biscuits. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's just, it seems like another one of those cases where a classic Southern food is based more on preservation and mm-hmm. sustaining of life than what we know it is. It's kind of like good, greasy breakfast and like soul settling, sop it up with some gravy kind of thing. But that's just what I've seen. I'm just, I, I didn't yeah. know that it was really so much about preserving things. Well, if it's you just... think about like the, the history of the South, we were, it was very agrarian and poor for a really long time. Um, so you would, you necessarily you would need to preserve food as long as possible because you're, it's not like you can go out and buy you know, a new pack yeah. of bacon every no, day. You bring up an interesting point, though, Mike. I think the more that we've kind of been diving into all of these different Southern foods and Southern history, the theme that comes up, and it, it's no surprise, right? We all knew this. We know American history. We know the history of the South. But I think we're uncovering things that, like, maybe, you know, you and me or people who aren't super uh, deeply ingrained in the food industry side of things, learning about how everything actually came back to preservation Mm -hmm. and keeping things for as long as you possibly can. So that's been really interesting for me. Yeah, and we're flanked by people who know the answer, so that's the other good thing. (laughs) We're just here for uh, colorful commentary. Absolutely. Especially Jeffrey always has a nice shirt, too, by the way, speaking (laughs) of colorful commentary. I noticed that, like, you always have a really nice colored shirt. The dry cleaning bills. It's gorgeous. (laughs) It's gorgeous. But but anyway, so science-wise, like, what's the science of biscuits, and is it something that's going to make me get less interested in like you know how some <laughs> national radio companies have like science friday and i'm like you're not going to trick me with science <laughs> on a friday that's well, not what i'm here for this but, science tastes good though yeah so what's 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 some palatable science about biscuits so biscuits are really similar to um think something like pie dough so you can kind of think about these as analogs right mm-hmm. biscuits have more flour in them than a pie dough would but otherwise they're basically the same and they're Tip, they're typically like um, made by by mixing together flour and fat in a way that makes them rise and have nice texture. Right. So it's all about controlling the temperature of your fat and the amount of liquid you're adding to the flour. Okay. And there's lots of different types of biscuits, right. and that has to do with, I'm looking at the both of the biscuit knowledge people, that has to do with the type of flour and the type of fat that you use, is that mostly right? Right, Mm -hmm. and also the ratios. Yep, the ratios, and and kind of mixing technique, too. There's a lot of things that makes them different, but it's what's cool about biscuits is, like, again, you're using the same basic ingredients. It's pretty much just flour, liquid, and fat. And sometimes the liquid is the fat, in the case of cream biscuits. Yeah, so Uh. let's, let's, can we talk about some of the different kinds of biscuits and Mm -hmm. what make them different? Jeffrey, Mike and I are just like swiveling our heads back and forth. Yeah, because I'm learning. I want to be able to tell people things after (laughs) I'm I'm like, yeah, biscuits are actually made of flour. (laughs) Spoiler alert. (laughs) Have you heard? (laughs) But too much flour. Too much flour is bad. Should we go from easy to hard? Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Easy. Uh, So easy, I would say that the drop biscuits Mm -hmm. are probably the easiest. It refers to the the style in which they're mixed, uh, as Kate alluded to. Uh, Those are just kind of your flour, your leavening, uh, your salt is all kind of whisked together. Uh, You add in your, uh, usually it's a liquid fat. I've I've seen sour cream a lot in drop biscuits, something that makes the dough very pliable. Uh, And then it is scooped out onto a baking sheet, not formed, not rolled out or anything. Uh, sometimes brushed with butter, sometimes not. I always like it with butter, but then just blast it in the oven. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of loose. The tops are really craggly, uh, but the texture is very, very tender because they're typically not worked uh, mm-hmm. or kneaded or anything very much. Yep, and the, fl- the fat, when you use a liquid fat in the drop biscuit or if you used even just uh, even a s- solid shortening, the fat tends to coat the flour a little bit more, which will prevent gluten from forming, which is also why you end up with a more tender biscuit that mm-hmm. way. And that's the like really crumbly, 
style. You made some the uh, the hand no chive chive and cheddar I think right yeah the drop I think there's bacon in there too yeah there is yes there is bacon <laughs> in there those were Hopefully. so good I made those for a party and they were just as you described uh, I, one of my personal favorites. Anyone can make a drop biscuit like right now. Like I did then it. Make one right now, then Kate. <laughs> yeah, <right>. yeah. Do it. <laughs> and also, you know, if you don't like getting your kitchen dirty or having flour everywhere, drop biscuits are very contained to the bowl that mm-hmm. they're in. So yeah. if, if you know, fast and easy is what you're looking for, go for the drop biscuits. Yeah. Okay. Now, is there an intermediate uh, biscuit or what's there, next yeah, on what, the Yeah. On how the do chain. we go? Where do we go from here? Uh, so in our research, uh, you know, Ashley and I were kind of talking yesterday about cathead biscuits. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mystery of the cathead mis- biscuits. <laughs> you know, it sounds mysterious. Yeah. Growing up in Mississippi, I'd always heard of cathead biscuits as being kind of an ex- extension of a drop biscuit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was either scooped out or you would even ball the dough in your hands and put it on a baking sheet. Uh, some people will roll them out, uh, as we saw. But you know, most commonly, I think, drop biscuits, mm-hmm. uh, but formed into a ball uh, a little bit more. Just the size. Uh, yeah, spoiler. Kinda... It's uh, the size of a cat's head. Right. Okay, no, that was no. the name, I would imagine. <laughs> I mean, like it resembled, did it have ear kind of shapes as well, well and the whiskers? If or... you dro- if you do a drop biscuit, they're going to be really craggly on the top, so maybe it's kind of furry looking, right? Craggly. Mm-hmm. It's always, I, know, I, like I, I love word, whenever craggly. we can use a word like craggly. Any, any cat people make the biscuit, hold it up to your feline's <laughs> noggin and see what it is. <laughs> That's uh, how you know. That's the true <laughs> test of a, of a southern cat head biscuit. Take but. a picture and tag us. We're at, uh, <laughs> at South, South Kitch on Twitter. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Um, and Instagram. So we go from drop to cat head, and then is there another type mm-hmm. of method of uh, or what? What? What goes from there? So, what you'll typically see when you you know look if you were to Google buttermilk biscuit, mm-hmm. you know what you're going to see is usually a round two to three inch biscuit with lots and lots of super flaky layers. Yes. And those biscuits are going to be made with butter and buttermilk. So mm-hmm. they're called buttermilk biscuits, and yes, you can make them with shortening, but to get those like perfect, beautiful, pull-apart layers, you really need to use butter. Um, and those are, you know, can be slightly more tricky to make. I don't, I think anyone can make a good buttermilk layered butter, butter and buttermilk biscuit, but it does take a little bit more finesse. Yeah. And that's a one you roll out, mm-hmm. cut. You roll out and you almost fold it back onto itself, kind of like a trifold envelope, okay. and then roll that back out to where you create about nine to 12 different layers you know, individually. It's almost like a lamination process right. uh, like you would make for a croissant or a puff pastry or yeah. something like and that. what you're doing there is you're taking the – there's pieces of butter in the dough, and when you roll it out and then fold it over, you're kind of smushing the butter into a really, really thin little layer. And when it goes into a super hot oven, all of the water and the butter – will evaporate and turn to steam, and that's what makes it puff. The layer and puff, yeah. This is fun science. Yeah. You were wary about the science. <laughs> I'm always scared of science because I don't understand it. It's kind of like when they t- first teach you about electricity in shop class, and they shock you with that machine, and everybody's holding hands. Everyone they did that, right? They shocked you in shop class. Well, I'm and, from and Alabama. You know, we did a lot can... of corporal punishment in my school, but I'm, I turned out okay. It, right? can, it can't even blind you. So. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm always thinking of, you know, and, and Kate, you and I were talking about this uh, sitting down and doing some work the other day, just how you were saying it drives you crazy that people get um, self-rising flour, right? Oh, yeah. Jeffrey and I disagree with That's about this. That's why there are two people in between <laughs> us. Oh. <laughs> great, the great flower fight. Cat head fight. Cat head fight. maniacal <laughs> look in her eyes. Producer Ramona is on my side, too, so it's cool. But again, so that's like one of those things. To me, if you are looking, which I think a lot of people go for convenience, and they go and they say, okay, well, self-rising. And even I was talking on one of our other episodes about Natalie Dupree's mm-hmm. uh, Southern Biscuits book. And there's a lot in the beginning of that book about – you, how to make your own uh, mix, but it also kind of breaks down whether or not you really need self-rising flour. Right. And a lot of her stuff sounded to your point that you can kind of just do this really easily at home. Yeah, and so th- one of the biggest advantages of self-rising flour, besides just having less fewer things to measure, is that the leavening and the salt are very evenly mixed with the flour. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, you know, if you're concerned about that, sure, you use self-rising flour. But if you just have all purpose at home... Just take a add add the baking powder to the flour, add the salt, take a whisk, and just stir it for like a good minute, mm-hmm. and you're going to get everything su- well evenly distributed throughout there. It's it'll work just the same. So what's the most complicated biscuit, right? If we're like going up the ladder, mm-hmm. what? we have. I'm, we have I'm pointing to the biscuits. biscuits that we have here. 
Yes. Um, staring at us. So this week, uh, I made Touch of Grace biscuits, and these are um, a recipe that developed by a biochemist and Ooh, that sounds complicated. Amazing yeah, cookbook Already. author Shirley Kur. I can't pronounce her name. Jeffrey, do you know how to pronounce her name? Uh, Is it Korher? Her? Sounds good to me. Yep. I'm <laughs> sorry, Shirley. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is a recipe that her grandmother used to make, and it kind of combines like every single biscuit ingredient you would want in a to put. There's flour, there's shortening, there's mm. cream, there's mm. buttermilk, and there's butter, which wow. is all, so it has everything. And what you do is you make this like absurdly sloppy, gloppy mixture. Right. Sounds like it has to it's, be. It looks like cottage cheese. Okay. And so you take this blobby goop and <laughs> you use a spoon. You're selling it so well. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying this because if you try to make this at home, you're going to mix You'll it up it. and you're going to be like, think what on wrong. earth am I doing? Kate's doing the right thing here, man. I'm, I'm with just, you because I would it's mess worth this it. up. Okay. It's worth it. I promise. Goopy mess. Goopy mess. Uh-huh. You take it and then you um, scoop it out into a big tray of flour in okay. like small biscuit size scoops. If you have a kind of a smallish ice cream scoop, you can use that, or two like dinner spoons. But not too big, okay? Not too big, like two inches. So what are you doing then? Dredging so you, it? you drop it into the flour, and it'll kind of like <laughs> splat. Oh, really? That sounds yep. good. Yeah. Yep, it'll splat, <laughs> and then you take some more flour and you sprinkle it all over the top of it. Okay. So you kind of coat this blob with flour. With flour, yep. And you pick it up in your hands, and if it's coated properly in flour, it's not going to stick. And you kind of. Shake it around in your hands a little bit to get off the excess flour and sort of shape it into a ball, but it's not going to be really ball shaped. You have to do this with each individual biscuit. Yes. I'm out. Um, and yeah. then after that, you put it into a very, very greased cake pan. So more grease. More right. grease. Yeah. Oh yes, lots of grease. Um, and then as you continue to make these biscuits, you stick them into the cake pan and you want to smush all of the biscuit rounds up next to each other. Uh-huh. Um, because again, this dough is really, really wet and that's kind of the secret. Yeah. So when you stick this whole pan in the oven, again, a really hot oven, all of that liquid is going to turn to steam and evaporate and leaven the biscuits. Ah. And if they're not pushed up next to each other, they'll kind of still splat a little bit and go flat. But if they're all scrunched up together, they'll lift each other up and rise and make it these like super fluffy, really crumbly and delicious biscuits. And that's what we see in mm-hmm. front of us. Uh, we have some of these in uh, stoneware bowls too. Look yes. very beautiful. But um, we, the, the biscuits really do have kind of like, you can tell from the top that they've been pushed together. It seems like you had a lump at one time. It's definitely not the smoothness that you would see from your store-bought can where you just whip them out and it's just like a perfect layer of crispiness on top. It's bumpy, but it does. It's got crumbles all over it. Um, it looks like it stayed moist on the inside. They're Making very everybody moist. hungry. Yeah, I mean. It's like I'm, the nudie of the biscuit world. Yeah, yeah so it's kind of, and it, it comes out of the oven almost like a pull-apart loaf if you watch Great mm-hmm. British Baking Show and they talk about pull-apart loaves. So you drop the whole thing onto a cutting board and bring it out to the table and just kind of go oh. at it. Okay. Without knives, right? You're not no, cutting No, you don't this. need a knife. Okay. Is, you can that, put, that's a... Uh, that's complicated. That is a controversial <laughs> yeah, a topic around biscuit. here. We'll it talk is. about that, I guess. Yeah. So speaking of complicated biscuits, we have ways to make them less complicated, right? Yes. Chef Jeffrey, we're going to talk about our kind of biscuit commandments and how to do it right every time. This was kind of compiled just through probably 20 to 25 separate batches of biscuits that I made over a couple of days. <laughs> Uh, you wow. know, altering uh, uh, amounts and types of flours, different types of fats, oven temperatures. Uh, is everyone else imagining Jeffrey like swimming through a pile yeah? Why of exactly in were this you house? doing this? Well, if we... you don't mind us asking, can you tell us what why you were making so many biscuits? Because I'm dedicated to my craft. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. because that's what I'm talking about. That's, okay, so, so you made a lot of biscuits. That's and... right. I used to look like a young Matt Damon or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, still do. And, you know, it's like early Philip Seymour Hoffman now. He and still does. Know. Everybody on Facebook watching, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> and just so you all know, Jeffrey does not have a particularly large kitchen. So I'm picturing actual stacks of biscuits just like up on the counter, like totally enveloping the entire workspace of the kitchen like and going out to the dining like... table and just <laughs> everywhere. Is that what it was? It was like building a fort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, biscuits would actually make probably a good fort. Uh, as they got stale. To, to <laughs> you eat, eat the wall. Eat them and then the war comes to your door of biscuits, yeah. Here's my peace offering, I surrender. 
so you know, if we're going to kind of call these commandments or just guidelines, you know, the first thing I would definitely say that is uh, I would feel should be universal is make sure your oven is hot enough. Uh, because you know most biscuits or all biscuits kind of have chemical leavening in it, be it baking powder, baking soda. Uh, Angel biscuits use yeast, which is more biological. But the steam that's created by a very hot oven, minimum of 425 degrees, uh, will give you taller, you know, more risen biscuits. You know, all right, first thing, hot oven, 425 degrees. We can have Jeffrey give you this uh, this cheat sheet. If you I'm have, writing you these down just because <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll share it all. It's like in school; they tell you if He's, you write it, you might remember it a little bit more. Yeah, you're right. All right, all right. Just uh, calling you out. Yeah, no, no, no. It's fine. Uh, number two, you want to have the right kind of flour. Uh, and the right kind meaning made from the right type of wheat. There is a reason that all chefs out there and even old grandmothers swear by white lily flour. Mm. Be it if you do the all-purpose and add your own leavening or the self-rising, it's made from soft winter wheat, uh, which has less gluten in it. It's higher protein. Mm. Uh, and so it will – or uh, and it won't – It'll form shorter gluten strands, and it will rise taller. I've, I've done some of these without with just straight all-purpose flour uh, from other brands that are not White Lily, and they are dense. They come out shorter, uh, just really inferior biscuits. And you want short gluten strands. Yes. yes. Why? <laughs> uh, so when you're making biscuits, biscuits are a quick bread. Okay. Uh, and the longer the gluten strand, the more it's going to hold together. Think like how tough uh, a baguette ah, would yes. be. And okay. you know, that's good for its purpose. You don't want a biscuit to have a similar texture to a baguette. No, nope. nope. not at all. You know, okay. Soft tender is kind of what we're looking for. Uh, you know, you'll see either tender or flaky. They're not really the same as much as some of the advertising. will lump them together. They're always mm-hmm. together, yeah, tender and <laughs> flaky. It's like, yeah, you want shorter gluten strands will mean a more tender biscuit. Got okay, it. so white lily flour is your, the, the commandment number two, yes? And fun fact, uh, soft winter wheat, which is also in white lily flour, uh, is part of the non-51% corn that makes up Maker's Mark bourbon. Mm. Oh, oh, so we might do fun. some extra science and make yeah. some other things while we're at That's it. That's right. Yeah, okay. Go to jail with the biscuits. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Bootleg. All right. Bonus points. What's okay. next? Uh, next one is the right kind of fat. Uh. Uh, for my taste, through our research that we did, I found that anything that's dairy-based, be it butter or cream cheese or heavy cream, even sour cream to some degrees, trump shortening lard, uh, kind of the more uh, processed or, you know, Hydrogenated. Like hydrogenated. That's, that's where it was. A uh, controversial statement. Are there people who I feel like? Yeah, because when you said Trump, who... I was really like, you can use Trump in a biscuit, but it was okay. No. That's not. That's I not the controversial. I was oh, gonna sorry. Say, <laughs> I was gonna say gonna that. Be huge. <laughs> Cat head, huge. Uh, I was gonna say that. I feel like there's a lot of uh, Southern grandmas and and such who swear by. Shortening, or it, is that Crisco? Crisco, it's, right? Is that uh-huh. so? Would we say that's like a controversial commandment? It it could be. Could be. Uh, you know, it's, I'm all about controversy. I, I think so I'm almost okay all of these could be, except for the oven temperature, right. but uh, and maybe the kind of flour, because as we learned in our research, that nobody can agree on on biscuits. This mm-hmm. is just through through my research. Yep, yep. I found that the, that butter just tastes better than shortening. It, yeah, and it does produce it. They produce different biscuits. Is the other thing because if Butter and shortening are chemically different. Mm-hmm. Butter has f- water in it, and it has milk solids in it. Shortening is fat and maybe some preservatives, um, depending on what kind of shortening you're buying. Mm-hmm. Um, so it interacts differently with flour, and so you end up with like the, the Touch of Grace biscuits that are made with shortening. There's a ton of butter on top of them, by the way, so mm-hmm. you still get the flavor, but the texture is, is shorter mm-hmm. using shortening. It coats the strands of fat like like you would with melted. We were talking about with melted fat for a drop biscuit. Mm-hmm. It makes it more crumbly. Butter, you get these nice flakes, and you really aren't going to get those flakes with shortening. I've I've used butter and shortening like a mixture mm-hmm. inside, oh. so it seems like that's been it, it. It's turned out well every time. Um, but yeah, I've seen I've seen both, and I always feel a little bit weird just even having Crisco in the in refrigerator. The I'm kind of like, is this mm-hmm. old school? But it's still, it actually, when you when you don't overuse it, it has never gone wrong for what I've made at home. Yeah. And also in the name of research, I did try the butter flavored shortening. Oh. Um, uh, that's right. Uh, no. 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 no just never. No. Never, y'all. <laughs> okay, so the right kind of fat, what's next? Uh, is when it comes to your liquid, I am a fan of full fat buttermilk. Mm. Uh, I think the tang 
from the buttermilk. I think that also the acidity, the way it reacts with sodium bicarbonate or baking soda, mm -hmm. uh, will add up, have a fluffier yield in your biscuit. Uh, the only exception to this, I would say, would be uh, when you kind of combine the two steps. I've made a biscuit out of heavy cream. If you get a heavy cream that's about 40% butterfat mm -hmm. uh, in it, it will kind of take the place of the fat and the liquid together, kind of acting as one. Yeah. Don't heavy make cream, cream biscuits, biscuits, biscuits with butter. Yeah. No. <laughs> I did that. It was not good. <laughs> okay. Now, what's next after this? So this is one that I think everyone can agree upon. Unless you are making a drop biscuit, keep everything cold. Including flour. Uh, I mean, yes. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, so, so, like, throw your flour in the fridge? I've or seen freezer. that around Alabama. My so aunts yep. and everyone Keep your kept bowl. It, yeah. Keep your, you know, if you're using kind of one that I have for, for my next one that we can talk about, your food processor, anything as cold as possible, your fat. I'll even put it in the freezer yep. sometimes for a couple of minutes just to make sure that it's nice and cold. Even the bowl. Wow. Even the bowl. Yeah. Especially if you're making biscuits in the summertime. Okay, because it's going to hit and you're, it's going to melt that butter or whatever else, you're, and you're going to get a weird biscuit. Yeah, your room yep. temperature is higher. Yep. Uh, yep. If you're anything like me, the heat from your hand will cause the fat to start to melt. Uh -huh. And if you have this kind of homogenous mixture of fat and flour, you're not going to get a lot of rise out of your biscuits. Yeah. And they're going to be very dense and leaden. Mm -hmm. Good tip okay. there. All yeah, right. That's a great yeah. tip. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in the South, it's hot. So it is. making biscuits in the summer mm -hmm. yep. and put your stuff in the fridge first. Take yeah. the extra step. Yeah. And, and something that I'll also do is depending on the style of biscuit that I'm making, once I've cut them out, I'll put them on a sheet tray and put the sheet tray in the fridge for about five to 15 minutes. Yep. Yep. Good tip. I like okay. that one. What's next? All right. Uh, so we kind of talked about, I like to use a food processor when I'm blending my fat into my flour. This is not necessary by any means, but I found the most successful biscuits that I produced happen this way. Uh, like I said earlier, just the heat from my hand or using a, a pastry cutter or something like that, just a few pulses very quickly. Uh, and you'll still have, you know, globs of fat, but it's integrated into the flour a little bit more. Mm. Okay. So it's a little bit more of a different type of mixture than, say, your stand mixer is going to give you. It's going to get in there and just chop yep. it a little bit more finely. You don't want to use your stand mixer. No. Okay. No, stand, right. stand mixer is going to mix and blend it together versus the blade of a processor, which is going to cut the fat down. I feel like people are out there using their stand mixers to make biscuits, and they had never heard someone say, don't do that. Keep well, them. Don't. Keep mixers away <laughs> because the, you know, at, they're going to develop gluten. You're going to end up overworking your dough if you're using a mixer. Which is commandment number seven. That's right. Ah, uh, nice. Very nice. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> yeah, very important. Do not overwork your dough. Yeah, we talked about earlier gluten development. The one exception to this, I would say, would be if you're making a biscuit that's designed to be a sandwich. Uh, you know, you're going to want something that's going to support the layers, and when you go to cut through it in the center uh, to not fall apart and crumble on you. So I'm okay with working it a little bit more if a sandwich is your ultimate goal. If you're spreading some jelly on it and everything, too, and then it starts to get all kind of shaky on the bottom and all that stuff, I guess. Yeah, and then you have to have room for things like bacon, eggs, cheese, all that. Yeah, okay. Never had that before. Is that a thing in the South? Bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit? Uh, um, no. <laughs> okay. Not, not, not at all. What is bacon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Certainly didn't eat one of those a week ago. Okay. Now, one thing about overworking, though, um, does that also apply? Again, a lot of folks, you, there's the hand mixing of everything. So if you're making those layers and you're folding, um, mm -hmm. how, how many folds is too many folds, would you say? I like to go with three total folds. I found that to be about the magic number that doesn't overwork the dough, but we'll still create this. The, the biscuits that are in front of us here were folded over three times. They are beautiful, by the way. They are buttered, but they are also golden brown. They are knife cut, which adds a beautiful uh, corner element to each biscuit I've seen. Uh, any thoughts on it, Ashley? I ate one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to look there. <laughs> uh, and you said they're cream cheese biscuits. Yes. Right? So, yeah, they're, I mean, they were delicious. They were, uh, I don't have a better word to three describe folds. them. Three folds. Yeah, okay. they've got three folds. They're golden brown. They tasted kind of cream cheesy. Okay. And they were light and delicious. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so this kind of leads into the next couple. Uh, so if you're cutting your biscuits, you know, you, you buy the set of round biscuit cutters. If you don't have one and you want to work in a pinch, I've even seen some people use uh, just a drinking glass mm -hmm. uh, turned upside Been down. There. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, a couple of things you can do. Number one, uh, when you go to to punch down with your cutter, make sure you're just going down directly once. Don't twist it. Uh, you will mess up the layers that you've I created. I feel like that's a common, and that's a common mistake. Would you, 
I've also seen people who will flour their cutter. Would yes. you recommend that? I keep a small little mound of flour mm-hmm. uh, on my on my work surface yeah. Yeah. and just kind of dip my cutter into it and then go bit to where it's just enough to create more traction. Mm-hmm. No stickiness left on the biscuit cutter kind of thing, and then you start dragging biscuit pieces over to the next biscuit, and yeah. next thing you know, it's it's all it, it's we've lost all of the purpose of a one biscuit kind of thing here. We've got like eight in one, <laughs> right. like a it, nugget of biscuits or something. And and you know that's that's a great point. And the way around that is to just use a very sharp knife and cut your biscuits into squares. Yep. They look funny, but they taste even better. These look great to That's me. My... I, I've never thought about a cut, a, a square cut. You know, I've seen them, though, at mm-hmm. restaurants. You know, yeah. you see yeah. it, and I'm always like, huh, I wonder That's what cake. they did differently. Yeah, and I it's think it's like, cake. Duh. Uh-huh. I use a knife. <laughs> and you know what? I don't even own biscuit cutters, y'all. I just use a knife. I, I don't various, make all biscuits. I have all kinds of shapes and dolphins <laughs> and all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah, 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 we... I bought a set. I bought a little three set. <laughs> yeah. But... Never um, had yeah. a dolphin shaped biscuit before. How's that? It's amazing. They're happy. You know, they, you know <laughs> you're going to want to hug and take pictures with it. Same as SeaWorld. You know, it's the exact same thing. <laughs> Instead of going to SeaWorld, Mike yep. makes dolphin shaped biscuits. Come to biscuits. the house. We'll have a dolphin biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's our last biscuit commandment? Uh, so, last one, we'll kind of roll it into two. Uh, when, you, when you're using your dough uh, and you've rolled them out and you've cut your dough, let's say you're using a round cutter, only rework your dough one time. Uh, in back into shape to kind of cut more. If you go more than that, then you're really going to get tough biscuits. But that's the, your overworking, then. Right? That is yeah. the overworking. But the final point is brush them with some type of fat, uh, pre- preferably melted butter, before and after they come out of the oven. I've seen people use, and I've done this with some success, heavy cream before they go into the oven. Oh. But when they come out, you're definitely going to want to hit them one more time when they're nice and hot, and will absorb some of that extra butter just mm-hmm. with some melted over the top. You'll hear a nice like. S- when you put it on top too it's very satisfying awesome good okay so uh biscuit commandments thank you very much chef jeffrey um what about uh when you talk about your favorite biscuits like you know because there's something in there about places that have really good biscuits and we actually did a little bit of this recently did we not we did we did some extensive research it's a tough job here at southern kitchen and we tested a handful of fast food biscuits and I'm going to spoil a little bit uh, about Biscuit Week, but Bojangles was the winner of the best biscuit. And I have to say, I went back for that biscuit several times. It was by far the best. It was golden brown. It was a little bit of salt. It was crunchy on top. Mm-hmm. Perfectly round. My mouth is watering. It is, I'm yeah. Talking. Like, did you hear that? I had to <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard, I heard a little <laughs> real quick, yeah. Uh, but, you know, Jeffrey and Kate, your kind of biscuit expertise, uh, we talked about the Bojangles biscuits as well. Tell me about what you think they did. Did they follow these biscuit commandments in order to get that perfect biscuit? I feel like they definitely had one of the more tender, fluffy biscuits mm-hmm. that were out there. Uh, there was also a significant amount of salt. Some of the other biscuits that yep. we had uh, had a more pronounced sugar right. kind mm-hmm. of background to it. Uh, you know, they they kind of had that slightly craggly top. They weren't overworked, mm-hmm. uh, and they were nice and buttery. Yeah, they were so good. They were crispy too. Like it was almost like they had been flash fried or something. But it wasn't <laughs> in the way to where they would become a greasier biscuit. But I just noticed the crispiness on top. But I mean, this was a serious scientific thing. I mean, Kate was kind of overseeing the the bean counting or biscuit counting, so to speak. Yep. But it was a blind this. taste test. Yeah, you know, yeah. we no one knew what we were eating. Yep, we could guess some yep. of some of the biscuits were more obvious than others. Yep. But um, yeah, I actually hadn't had many Bojangles biscuits before and like i said i kept coming back they were just i i'm gonna stop now oh. <laughs> there's one by the office it's so friday i mean uh, it's not, not not necessary to stop now but i mean it is uh, probably a good thing for your heart health to not continue to eat bojangles all the time but if you're going to eat a biscuit we found that bojangles was uh, excellent and i told you guys i was just like i really think that this is going to win because i was a person in charge of picking up the bojangles biscuit and <laughs> i snuck one on the way in and it was just <laughs> Oh, it was so. You're wonderful. giving away your scientific expertise by I saying know. that, Mike. That's well, but I, I it was it, I ordered extra so that I could just, just have one for just myself. It wasn't you already do what it was uh, going in. It wasn't blind for you. I gotta it say, was, it always makes me excited if I have an early morning flight in the Atlanta airport in the T terminal where I know there's a Bojangles oh, and nice. I can have a it's Bojangles hard, biscuit. It's hard to find coffee in the T terminal, but. <laughs> Bojangles, good to know. Uh, so we're actually excited to have Bojangles sponsor our Biscuit Week, and it's actually a very happy happenstance that uh, 
they were they won. That they're yeah. delicious. Yep. Uh, so thank you to Bojangles for number one, the most delicious biscuits. Thank you for uh, winning, Bojangles. <laughs> 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 we're glad. But speaking of uh, winning, the opposite of winning oh, is God. this week's bless your heart moment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, the collective uh, groan. Who wants to lead it off here? Uh, let's just, just say uh, Taco Bell, first of all. So how? why are we talking about Taco Bell when we're talking about biscuits? It so should be the question. background is that Taco Bell decided to start releasing these like triangle-shaped dipping things out of chicken for some reason. Like a, like a nacho-shaped chicken nugget. Chick- yeah, so they're like, I mean, I, maybe it's sort of like they're double down from KFC or something where it's like you take fried chicken and make it into something else, and so I think chips or something but um last fall they decided they were going to make chicken and biscuits shaped like triangles served from a cone yep (laughs) um i don't think any of us have actually tried these they were in knoxville at first i saw the picture and i was like "Mm -mm, not for me yeah (laughs) yeah no with various honey sauces but like taco bell come on you make Burritos and tacos and delicious cinnamon swirl fried and things. They're officially the healthiest fast food chain. Also, yeah. Taco Bell. The Fresca menu. That's or, right. Yeah. Is it Fresca? Fresh. Fresh. fresh that's right. Fresh, like the soda. Fresca. Fresh, 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 fresh. Fresh. Anyway, something. <laughs> The producer Ramona should But do they have <laughs> any like, business what making are biscuits? About? Yeah. Do they have any business no. in this space? They're from Southern California. No, well, Southern. They do other <laughs> breakfast <laughs> items. Co- you know, within that space well compared to what their competitors do. Mm-hmm. But stick to the tortillas, guys. Stick to what you know. They, they tried to do like a, a biscuit taco one That's time. what I was going to uh, say. I saw that. Was, like it was like a puffy taco, like a biscuit round, like a biscuit tortilla. In, yeah, in, in my restaurant days, one of my cooks brought one in, and I tried a bite of this thing. It was gummy. It was, it was weird. It's yeah, the only if, way to describe it. It's just weird. You, you shouldn't should bend a biscuit. How do you bend biscuits? That's already wrong. <laughs> yep. so. yeah, you you have to be, like, that. deep into fourth meal territory to yeah, enjoy any yeah. of these things. Well, that's what they sell, well, so, you know, that makes yeah. sense. Well, Bless either your way. heart, Taco Bell. Bless your heart, Bless. Taco Bell. <laughs> Tacos, not biscuits, please. But that will do it for us at Sunday Supper this week. Um, we'd always love to hear from you, and you can reach out to us with feedback at editor at southernkitchen.com. And also make sure you're subscribing to us at Apple Podcast or wherever you get your podcast. And please hit your like buttons on Facebook so that you can keep up with us on our next episodes. And speaking of Facebook, I think we actually have some questions to answer mm-hmm. from our Facebook live audience. Oh, so we'll, uh, right. we'll let producer Ramona ask us the questions, and then we will answer them. Excellent. Have you ever tried Seven Up biscuits, and what do you think of them? I'll be the translator. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no. Uh, one of the ones that I did try, uh, we, we're down south, so Coca Cola is the uh, the preferred. So I, I did I actually tried a Sprite biscuit. Hmm. I was not as much of a fan. I mean, I, I get the the premise where you know the carbonation from the soda uh, will kind of act as a, a leavening agent, but uh, they were a little overly sweet for my preferences. I found them to be a little bit tough. Uh, Makes sense. And mm-hmm. just. Not that, lemon lime, not lemony and limey. Not not <laughs> pronounced enough to where you would think. Yeah, it's too much like a Seven Up cake. I've had it too, and a Seven Up cake is good because you know you're getting cake. Yeah. When it goes into a biscuit, it's kind of like, you know, it, it it can be a lot. It can be a whole lot to take on. Yeah. Where is Southern Kitchen? Where is Southern ATL. Kitchen at? The World Wide Web at <laughs> southernkitchen.com. We are headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, but we reach an audience uh, nationally as well as internationally and uh, cover the South from Texas up to Virginia. And some of those questionable states, sometimes we dip into Maryland, sometimes we dip a little into Missouri. just kind of depends on how we're feeling that week. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. The South is an idea, like money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's just it's, it's wherever. It is. Yeah, the South is in your heart. That's right. That's mm-hmm. right. That was really nice. That was Thank cool. <laughs> what is the best brand of shortening to use in homemade biscuits? What is the best brand of shortening to use in homemade biscuits? Is there biscuits? other other brands besides Crisco? Crisco has kind of been my only experience mm-hmm. with it. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I don't know how it would have benefits over another kind of uh, you know unsaturated fat like or hydrogenated fat like that so uh, yeah. I quite frankly I'm not I didn't really know there were other brands <laughs> that's what yeah. I'm saying I, I mean don't... like you can technically like animal fat and is the same is a shortening in fact shortening used to refer to that and not to hydrogenated vegetable oil but mm. so you could I mean you could use lard and I think we could glump that in but I think 
Crisco, yeah. Yeah. The stick kind. I stick shape. Had a bunch of people say hello, and someone mentioned they like use baseball cream. If you've had an experience, mm-hmm. but we had a lot of people from outside of the South. Oh, well, hello. Oh, hello. Uh, Good we thing are, that Mike said the South is an idea. Yeah, we're here to, yeah. again, Southern biscuits. You shouldn't have to travel to the South to get them, but, I mean, if you have to, we are welcoming to you, and we have hot biscuits ready for you, usually on the weekend mornings. You know, it's At Mike's kinda, house, dolphin-shaped. Yeah, yeah <laughs> dolphin-shaped biscuits. And for you folks that are outside the South, uh, you know, check Amazon, because a lot of grocery stores, you know, let's say if you're up in the Pacific Northwest or, you know, up in the Northeast, may not carry white lily flour for your biscuits, but, you know, the cool thing about having, you know, Amazon and the web is that the, the world's a lot smaller these days. So anything you need, you can order online. Very yep. cool. Great. All right. Well, with that, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you, Chef Jeffrey Gardner, as always, for your biscuit expertise. Uh, thank you to Kate for doing the science and the history. Oh, you're welcome. Doing the knowledge, as they say, also. Uh, thank what you for I? Ashley Twist Cole for everything else. And we are, <laughs> she does everything else, for literally. Eating the biscuits. Everything else. And we're going to eat <laughs> Chef Jeffrey's, what do we call these biscuits? Uh, cream cheese biscuits. That's it. So, cream cheese biscuits for us. Stay tuned to Sunday Supper, and we'll see y'all next time. And remember, as uh, Humpty Hump once said, just grab them in the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> see y'all later. See ya. Bye, y'all. <laughs>